Former President Donald Trump is no stranger to exaggeration. However, unlike Trump's many baseless brags, his reputation as a ladies' man apparently is rooted in truth. From his teenage dates to his marriage with Melania, here's a peek inside the divisive businessman's complicated love life. In an interview with Harry Connick Jr. on his now-defunct talk show, Candace Bergen admitted to going on a dinner date with Donald Trump. Bergen shared that she was 18 years old at the time and studying at the same college Trump went on to attend. She said, "...it was like a blind date. He called me in the dorm and I was bored. So he picked me up. He was wearing a burgundy three-piece suit with burgundy patent leather boots and he was in a burgundy limousine. So it was very color-coordinated." Evidently, Bergen wasn't a big fan of head-to-toe, claret-colored clothing and cars, as she said she got home by 9 p.m. after a short dinner. Bergen revisited the subject during a Watch What Happens Live segment in 2017 called Candidly Candace. When pressed by host Andy Cohen on whether she gelled with the then-teenage Trump, Bergen insisted there was no chemistry between them. She doubled down by asserting that they had no physical contact at all. Cohen persisted, though, asking Bergen if she found Trump to be attractive. He was a handsome, he was a good-looking guy. Yeah. And a douche. Kim Richards started out her career in show business as a child star, appearing in movies such as Escape to Witch Mountain and TV series like The Wonderful World of Disney. Years later, she would find success in the world of reality TV when she was brought on as a member of the original cast of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. After a few tumultuous seasons, she parted ways with her spot in the main roster, but has continued to make guest appearances on the show over the years. One of her most memorable moments? Why, that would be when she dropped by the season 7 reunion and revealed she used to date the 45th president. Host Andy Cohen asked Richards to confirm a rumor that she once dated Trump. Is that um, true? Yes. While the other housewives wanted more details, Richards would only share that they went out to dinner. I don't want to talk about the president. Oh, come on. <laughs> Donald Trump met Ivana in 1976 when he spotted her waiting outside a Manhattan restaurant. The 30-year-old swooped in and secured a table for the 27-year-old Czech model and her friends. A year later, they were married in a secret private ceremony. The couple worked tirelessly to expand Donald Trump's empire. As Vanity Fair reported in 1988, Ivana took an active role, first as the vice president of interior design and then as CEO of Trump's Castle Casino in Atlantic City. They had three children together, Donald Jr., Eric, and Ivanka. We get along very well and there's not a lot of disagreement because ultimately Ivana does exactly as I tell her to do. <laughs> As the New York Times noted, four different prenups were renegotiated as their family and wealth grew. But their marriage exploded after Ivana discovered Donald had been cheating on her with Marla Maples. He's not a chauvinist, is he? Oh, he's the worst. <laughs> a humiliating and very public showdown between mistress and wife on the ski slopes of Aspen instantly sparked a tabloid frenzy. The affair was front-page news as Donald and Ivana duked it out in a bitter divorce battle. In Lost Tycoon, The Many Lives of Donald J. Trump, author Harry Hurt III writes that in a sworn deposition, Ivana accused Donald of sexual assault. But in a statement for the book, Ivana insisted she hadn't meant rape in, quote, a literal or criminal sense. The couple finally agreed on a $14 million settlement in 1992. Still, the fallout would continue. Ivana Trump wrote in her own memoir that Donald Jr. reportedly refused to talk to his dad for a year. It took time for the wounds to heal and for them both to put their bitter divorce behind them. However, Donald and Ivana Trump did manage to eventually make up. Donald Jr. also managed to forgive his father's transgressions and join the family business alongside siblings Eric and Ivanka. Since then, Ivana has become a close confidant of Donald's. She told the New York Post in 2016, "...we speak before and after the appearances, and he asks me what I thought." These days, Ivana manages to always keep it real and speak her mind, just like her vocally forthright ex. But it would appear that her advice often falls on deaf ears, such as when she suggested to Donald that he calm down his rhetoric a notch or two. She told the Post, but Donald cannot be calm. He's very outspoken. He just says it as it is. 
Donald Trump may not heed his first wife's advice, but he clearly still respects Ivana's business savvy, so much so that after he became president, he offered her the position of Czech ambassador. In a different interview in 2017, she told The Post, My ex said, Ivana, if you want it, I give it to you. However, she declined the offer, explaining, I like my freedom, and I want to do what I want to do. Go wherever I want to go, with whomever I want. I don't need the prestige. And it's an 8 to 12 job. The tabloids poured over every detail of Donald and Ivana Trump's divorce battle. There was an endless stream of salacious stories about Donald Trump's then still unconfirmed affair with Marla Maples. It's hot. It's pretty hot. There was also a seemingly limitless list of beautiful women that the self-professed playboy was romantically linked to. Katherine Oxenberg was one of them. In a twist of fate, the Dynasty star twice portrayed Princess Diana, whom the Donald was apparently very into. According to a report in the Sunday Times, Donald apparently sent Diana flowers after her divorce, believing she was, quote, the ultimate trophy wife. The report went on to note that Diana had zero desire to become the next ex-Mrs. Trump. And neither did Oxenberg, who shot down the dating rumors, telling People magazine, "...it's a complete joke as far as I'm concerned. I hardly know the man." A tipster told the outlet that Donald and Oxenberg were platonic pals. Donald Trump and Marla Maples first bumped into each other on Madison Avenue after he ditched his limo and walked to work instead. Maples told Vanity Fair, "...I had seen him at different places throughout the years. I was just somebody he shook hands with." They immediately became firm, but platonic friends, Marla insisted. But as Vanity Fair recounted, this eventually moved to the next level as Maples started appearing on his arm all over Atlantic City. Pretty indiscreet, given that Donald's then-wife, Ivana Trump, was CEO of Atlantic City's Trump Castle. Nonetheless, it took another year before Ivana learned of the affair. Ivana wrote in Raising Trump, "...this young blonde woman approached me out of the blue and said, "'I'm Marla, and I love your husband. Do you?' Still, Donald attempted to keep his relationship with Maples on the down-low while his divorce from Ivana played out. Their affair was tumultuous, with multiple breakups. However, things seemingly settled down, for a while at least. Donald and Maples married in 1993, two months after the birth of their daughter, Tiffany Trump. They separated just four years later, and by 1999, they were officially divorced. Maples didn't hold back when it came to talking about her egotistical ex. She told the Daily Telegraph that Donald had been obsessed with her and that their marriage was, quote, "...built on an illusion." Unlike Ivana, who walked away with $14 million and $650,000 a year in child support, Maples had to make do with $2 million following her failed marriage. Donald also agreed to pay $100,000 a year child support until Tiffany Trump turned 21. A source told Vanity Fair that Maples, quote, "...was out of her depth in Trump's world." The source went on to add, "...it's a sad story. She really didn't know how to handle him." Maples admitted to The Telegraph, "...Donald was never the man I wanted to marry. He and his world were alien to me. I'm so happy to be away from Donald." and I'm just trying to move as far away as I can." A spokesperson later insisted Maples' comments had been taken out of context. Still, there's no escaping that Maples pulled up stakes and moved over 2,800 miles away from Donald to pursue a private life as a single mom in California. She told People, "...that was my choice, raising Tiffany outside of the spotlight. Her daddy is a good provider with education and such. But as far as time, it was just me." Her father wasn't able to be there with day-to-day -day skills as a parent. Donald Trump's relationship history is as dramatic and erratic as his now-defunct Twitter feed. His complicated love life is like a tangled ball of thread, with marriages, affairs, and flings all intertwined. However, the list of women he's reportedly been involved with is as factually questionable as the estimated more than 30,000 false or misleading claims that The Washington Post counted during his presidency. Have you ever dated a playmate? I refuse to answer that question. On the grounds that it may be true? It may be true. One of the women Donald was supposedly romantically linked to is Argentinian tennis star Gabriela Sabatini. 
The business tycoon reportedly dated the athlete for a month back in 1989. Sabatini was 19 years old when she is rumored to have connected with the 43-year-old Donald Trump. The beautiful brunette was at the top of her game, having just won a silver medal at the 1988 Seoul Games before reaching the semifinals in the Australian Open. Sabatini declined to acknowledge, let alone comment, on the dating reports at the time. But she supposedly denied having any relationship with Donald Trump to a Los Angeles reporter in 2019. Carla Bruni found herself at the center of a Donald Trump love triangle in 1991 after the New York Post exclusively reported that Trump had dumped Marla Maples for the singer. Trump acknowledged the story himself the day after the report dropped, telling the New York Post that Bruni was his new woman. Bruni was fresh out of a tumultuous affair with Mick Jagger, which Jerry Hall reportedly blamed as the catalyst for their separation. So Bruni probably wasn't chomping at the bit to be branded the other woman again. Bruni denied Trump's claims, telling the Daily Mail in an interview later that year that Trump was a lunatic, then adding, "...it's so untrue, and I'm deeply embarrassed by it all." I've only ever met him once, about a year ago, at a big charity party in New York. However, in Mick, The Wildlife and Mad Genius of Jagger, author Christopher Anderson claimed Bruni and Trump did hook up. He alleged she promised to split from Jagger if Trump left Maples. Anderson quoted Trump as saying, "...she was trying to get me to leave Marla, something I had in mind anyway, and she was using every psychological trick in the book." Adding a further twist to the tale, though, in his 2017 biography, Lost Tycoon, Harry Hurt III insists Trump did invent the dating rumor and was even the anonymous source behind the original story. Rowan Brewer Lane told the New York Times in 2016 that she met Donald Trump at a Mar-a-Lago pool party in 1990 when she was in her early 20s. Brewer Lane said in the interview, "...he brought me out to the pool and said, "'That is a stunning Trump girl, isn't it?' The newspaper went on to describe the incident as, quote, "...a debasing face-to-face -face encounter between Mr. Trump and a young woman he hardly knew." But Brewer Lane, who ended up dating Donald for a few months in 1993, disputed how her account was framed, saying, "...basically, they lied to me. They promised me multiple times that it would not be a hit piece." And clearly it was? Brewer Lane's criticism of the piece made her a media sensation, and she appeared on CNN, Fox & Friends, and other channels to complain about the Times article. They misled me. Playmate Barbara Moore claims she had an affair with Donald Trump from March to September 1993, when Trump was awaiting the birth of his fourth child. She told the Daily Mail, "...he was a great lover and a gentleman. I didn't know he was with someone else." let alone engaged to Marla Maples, and it was only recently I learned she was pregnant at the time." Moore met Trump during a Playboy fashion show at his Atlantic City Castle Casino Hotel. The centerfold model was psyched to see Trump, who had just released The Art of the Deal, and become a celebrated Manhattan property tycoon. Moore told the Mail, "...he's a powerful man, and he was one of the most eligible bachelors in the world." Moore says she went to a private cocktail party after the show. According to Moore, Trump only had eyes for her. After telling the 24-year-old she was beautiful and classy, they headed off to his suite for a night of something or other. Marla Maples was hoodwinked yet again after Donald Trump supposedly did her dirty in 1995, when unconfirmed reports began swirling that Trump was having an affair with New Zealand supermodel Kylie Bax. Neither Trump nor Bax denied or confirmed the reports deciding instead to plead the fifth. Still, they've maintained a close relationship over the years. Bax is a staunch Trump supporter, leaping to Donald's defense as he battled accusations of misogyny during his presidential run. Multiple women went public with sexual harassment and assault allegations against Trump. But Bax believed they were just seeking their five minutes of fame. She also made light of Trump's infamous Access Hollywood tape. She told NZME, I'm sorry, but he is a man. What about the 300 emails that Hillary Clinton has tried to cover up? What is more important, a guy trying to get a date or national security? It's unfortunate that he has said these things, and things have been done. But how much has been blown out of proportion, and how much is true? 
As Inside Edition recounted in 2016, Allison Giannini dated Donald Trump just after his final breakup with Marla Maples. Giannini was 27 when she was set up on a blind date with the 50-year-old self-professed multimillionaire. Despite only going out three times, Trump managed to impress Giannini. I know there have been a lot of things that have been said about him, but he, to me, he was just a great, great guy. While the two went their separate ways, Giannini bears no hard feelings. I really think he has a very sweet side to him that a lot of people don't see. Despite the briefness of their encounter, Trump left a lasting impression, spurring Giannini to launch a new career as a realtor. He always said, you know, real estate in California is always going to go up and to buy real estate, and that's what I've done. I Donald Trump may have had a thing with Jackie Siegel, star of Queen of Versailles and repeat below deck guest. While chatting with HuffPost to promote the documentary in 2013, she shared that she once had a brief romantic relationship with Trump. Siegel said, We just went out a couple times. Like, he invited us to Mar-a-Lago and go to his parties and things like that. He's a really great person. So much charisma. The socialite quickly backpedaled on her comments, though, telling the Orlando Sentinel, We're friends. I wasn't really dating. When I was modeling, I was on the Trump float in some parade. I can't believe there are headlines out there. Oh my God, how embarrassing. However, Jackie's husband David Siegel wasn't so shy about his affections for Trump. Following Trump's 2016 presidential win, the timeshare mogul gushed to the Sentinel, It's the greatest thing that's happened to me since I discovered sex. In the next four years, we're gonna dwarf what we've done. I'll go out on a limb financially to grow this company. And it seems Trump was committed to helping his buddy achieve his financial aims. Four companies linked to multi-millionaire Siegel were approved for almost $18 million in Paycheck Protection Program loans, which were supposedly created to help small businesses stay afloat during the COVID-19 crisis, according to the Miami Herald. Donald Trump was once a Howard Stern Show regular, adding more shock to Stern's already notoriously outrageous broadcasts. Trump was the king of TMI and making decidedly inappropriate comments. He was an open book. Trump really managed to excel during a bizarre interaction in 2001. Stern was interviewing tabloid journalist A.J. Benza about his book, which includes a passage about his girlfriend Kara Young dumping him for Trump. Not surprisingly, Trump just had to add his 10 cents and promptly ring into the show. Trump said, I've been successful with your girlfriend. I'll tell you that, A.J. I won your girlfriend. You know it. She knows it, and everybody knows it. The two started hurling angry barbs at each other, kicking off with Benza slamming Trump's hair and claiming he was out of his mind. Trump retaliated, alleging, AJ doesn't like Trump for one reason. I stole his girlfriend. I took her away like she was a dog. And Trump wasn't finished there. After Benza threatened to bash his head in with a bat, he said, Any girl you have, I can take from you. The story of Donald Trump and Victoria Zadrok boils down to a case of he said, she said. The Ukrainian model claimed in 2004 she went on four dates with Trump. However, he denied going out with her, telling celebrity journalist Chauncey Hayden, I don't even know who the hell she is. In an interview for Hayden's magazine, Steppin' Out, Zadrok alleged to Hayden that they met after Trump badgered Playboy magazine to arrange a date between them. She added, He's really into himself. On a date, all he does is talk about himself. He loves himself. I went to an Ivy League school. I'm very highly educated. I know words. I have the best words. In a phone call obtained by the Daily Beast, Trump asks Hayden not to run the interview. In the audio, Trump insists he would have never dated the ex-penthouse pet, saying, She looks like a third-rate hooker. Zadrak herself wasn't complimentary, telling Hayden, I never met a more narcissistic person than Donald. She said that Trump loves to boast about his abilities as a lover. She also called Trump racist and commented on his hair, saying, He uses so much hairspray, I would never dream of touching it. But he doesn't care. He really thinks he's one of the most handsome people on earth. Jill Harth first encountered Donald Trump in 1992, when she and her boyfriend George Horney met with him to discuss investing in their business. As noted in a New York Times feature, Trump was more interested in Harth than in doing deals. 
Nonetheless, he eventually agreed, and in 1993, the couple flew down to Mar-a-Lago to celebrate. Hearth filed a sexual harassment lawsuit in 1997, claiming Trump repeatedly groped her. One incident allegedly occurred in his daughter Ivanka's bedroom. She told the New York Times, I was admiring the decoration, and next thing I know, he's pushing me against a wall and has his hands all over me. However, they continued to work together until Trump had a change of heart and allegedly refused to pay the couple. Horany sued for breach of contract, while Hearth filed her sexual harassment lawsuit, which also alleged attempted rape. She eventually dropped the suit after Trump settled with Horany. Hearth and Horany married and then quickly divorced. Hearth told the New York Times that, in 1998, as she struggled to rebuild her life, Trump, who had just separated from Marla Maples, launched a charm offensive. Hearth and Trump actually dated for a while before he went on to marry Melania. Hearth's lawsuit was unearthed after Trump launched his presidential campaign. In 1996, the National Enquirer claimed that Trump told a friend, "...the truth is that Jill Hearth is obsessed with me and would do everything she could to get into my pants." Donald and Melania Trump first met in September 1998, when she snagged the attention of the mogul at a Fashion Week event. Vanity Fair reported that Donald was there with a date, but that didn't stop the 52-year-old from hitting on 28-year-old Melania. Donald asked the Slovenian model for her number, but she wouldn't provide it, instead insisting that he hand his digits over to her. Not before long, they went on their first date. Melania told Harper's Bazaar, "...I remember that night like it was two months ago." Nonetheless, as a friend of Melania told GQ, early into their budding relationship, the couple split. However, they soon reunited. And in 2005, they wed in an over-the-top ceremony at Mar-a-Lago, Melania wearing a $100,000 dress bedazzled with 1,500 crystals. Melania told Tattler the year they married, "...we are standing by each other and we are equal in the relationship. And we support each other, you know? We always believe, both of us, woman behind a man and man behind a woman." One of Donald and Melania Trump's many marital challenges occurred courtesy of Karen McDougal. The playmate alleged she had an affair with Donald, starting June 2006, three months after the birth of his son, Baron Trump. McDougal wrote about the purported affair in a journal that was leaked to The New Yorker. She claimed she met Donald Trump at a Playboy party, writing, "...he immediately took a liking to me, kept talking to me, telling me how beautiful I was." They began chatting on the phone before arranging to meet at the Beverly Hills Hotel. After some talk, they hooked up, McDougal wrote. They allegedly continued to meet whenever Trump was in Los Angeles or at multiple events around the country. McDougal claimed the guilt became too much eventually, and she ended things in April 2007. Just days before the 2016 presidential election, the Wall Street Journal broke the news of the alleged affair. The newspaper reported that McDougal had been hushed up by the National Enquirer's parent company. At the time, American media was owned by David Pecker, a close buddy of Donald's. The company was accused of paying McDougal for the rights to her story, preventing her from speaking about it ever again, then refusing to publish it. Both the media company and Trump denied all allegations against them. In 2006, Donald Trump also is alleged to have had an affair with Stormy Daniels. The adult film actor claimed their tryst began four months after Melania Trump gave birth to Barron, just weeks into Donald's alleged affair with Karen McDougal. Rumors about Donald Trump and Stormy Daniels first surfaced on the blog The Dirty in 2011. At the time, Donald was just a Manhattan property tycoon and reality TV star, so the story more or less flew under the radar. However, everything changed during Donald's presidential campaign. Daniels told 60 Minutes that 11 days before the election, she was persuaded to sign a $130,000 non-disclosure contract. Donald's attorney, Michael Cohen, brokered the deal, paying Daniels through a Delaware-based LLC created a month prior. By the terms of the agreement, Daniels would be forced to pay $1 million each time she spoke about the alleged affair, with a maximum penalty of $20 million. But Daniels refused to be silenced. In August 2018, she sat down with Anderson Cooper of 60 Minutes to dish the dirt. Trump denied the affair, 
and according to the BBC, called Daniels's allegations false, saying she was trying to extort him. Given all the scandals, sexual assault claims, and extramarital affair allegations, it's little surprise that speculation over the present-day Trumps' future together has been rife. According to the Washington Post, gamblers started taking bets on a possible divorce before the 2020 election. The odds began decreasing as the end of Donald Trump's presidency drew closer, following his loss to Joe Biden. However, when Melania Trump's chief of staff, Stephanie Grisham, was asked about the split speculation, she shot it down, saying, "...this question is pathetic, and exactly why people no longer trust the mainstream media. No legitimate journalist would ask this." Ex-White House official Omarosa Manigault Newman believes otherwise, though. Newman wrote in Unhinged, an insider's account of the Trump White House, "...in my opinion, Melania is counting every minute until he is out of office and she can divorce him. If Melania were to try to pull the ultimate humiliation and leave while he's in office, he would find a way to punish her." One thing's for sure, whatever Melania ultimately decides to do, her son will be at the heart of her decision. Melania's former friend Stephanie Winston Wolkoff claims Baron Trump's financial future is Melania's primary concern. Winston Wolkoff alleges that the former first lady stayed in New York during the first months of Donald Trump's presidency to renegotiate their prenup, guaranteeing Baron an equal share in the family business. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite celebs are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.